بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه الحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah bless you all Today's video is extremely important Very important And I regret that I have not done it earlier It is about one of the most important things we should be doing as a Muslim every single day And that is istighfar Asking Allah for forgiveness I'm just going to speak from the heart The amount of blessings that you get in your life from istighfar is something you will never be able to even comprehend a sheikh once told me this, I think last January. He said, try and make an effort or an aim to do 1,000 istighfars a day and then come back to me in six months and tell me what has happened in your life from the blessings, from the benefits. Subhanallah. Obviously, 1,000, he means just a high number. Does that make sense? So first of all, what is istighfar? What does it mean? It simply means to ask Allah for forgiveness. It's from the word, root word, maghfira, to cover up. That's why a helmet in Arabic terminology, a helmet is called a mirfar. A mirfar is a helmet. Sorry if you guys can hear background noise. It's very noisy here with the cars and all the people. It's called a mirfar, a helmet, because it covers your head. It covers it from the outside world. It protects it. So when you ask Allah for forgiveness, Rabbi you're asking for his maghfira. You're asking him to cover up your sins in this life and in the next life on the day of judgment. And on the Day of Judgment, every single thing will be apparent. Everything has been recorded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Qamar, وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ فَعَلُوهُ فِي الزُّبُرِ وَكُلُّ كَبِيرٍ وَصَغِيرٍ مُسْتَطَرٍ Every single thing we have done has been recorded, big or small. And in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Every single thing has been recorded, big or small. Every single sin, no matter how small you think it is, that no one has seen, it has been recorded. So there's so many benefits of istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness, not just from a dunya perspective, but from a spiritual perspective. Let's begin with the spiritual perspective. Why did Rasulullah ask Allah for forgiveness when he has no sins? He is the perfect human being. He has the most noble character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Indeed, you are an amazing character. Like Allah is amazed at this creation that he's done, subhanAllah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So why is Rasulullah asking for forgiveness? If you don't believe me, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says this in a hadith. He says, إِنَّهُ لَيَغَانُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِي وَإِنِّي لَأَسْتَغْفِرُ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةً Indeed, sometimes غان envelops my heart, okay? And therefore, I ask Allah for forgiveness, أَسْتَغْفِرُ a hundred times in one sitting. And the scholars have talked about this word, غان, and to put it simply, it means sometimes the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, might have been distracted by something. You know, someone has come and talked to them or an event has just happened. So he's distracted. So he's not necessarily thinking or mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically, like subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, dhikr. So when he remembers, he says, ah, astaghfirullah. So he asks Allah for forgiveness a hundred times. If that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sinless human being, he asks Allah for forgiveness 100 times in a sitting, then how about me and how about you? Ours should be far, far more. For we are far, far, far worse as human beings and worse worshippers. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam noticed he didn't ask Allah for forgiveness because of his sins. He asked Allah for forgiveness because he, he wasn't remembering him at that moment. Subhanallah, think about that. So the essence of istighfar is actually you asking Allah for forgiveness for not being such a good worshipper to Allah. That's the true essence of istighfar. Oh Allah, forgive me for I have not honored you as you are deserve. I have not praised you as you deserve, oh Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me for in my prayers I was not concentrating. Forgive me, oh Allah, I have been lazy in my ibadah. This is the essence of istighfar. Hence why Rasulullah wasallam, when he was in sujood, in qiyamul layl, the most blessed time on earth, during the night period, in the last third of the night, when his head, his most noble part, is on the floor, on the dirt, on the floor, he asks Allah, in sujood, in Masjid al-Nabawi, the most noble place on earth, and he's the most noble human being, he says, لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك Oh Allah, I have not been able to praise you as you deserve. <laughs> I cannot praise you as you deserve, O oh Allah. You as, as you have praised yourself. No matter how much I praise you or pray to you, O oh Allah, it doesn't mean anything in terms of honoring and, 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 and sort of magnifying who you truly are, your majesty, your power. You created the heavens and the earth. So that's why Rasulullah would ask for forgiveness. So when we ask for forgiveness, let us remember, we're not asking for forgiveness just from our sins, but because of our lack of good worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. 
That is really important to understand when you're saying, Astaghfirullah. How can, I, how can I not praise Allah properly? The one who created me, created everything, gave me everything. Astaghfirullah. Now, what will happen when you do a lot of istighfar? Wallahi, so many benefits will enter your life. Listen to me very carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Nuh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nuh alayhi salam, sorry, he was addressing his people, telling them, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا Nuh is telling his people, O oh my people, increase in your istighfar to Allah. Ask him for forgiveness. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, constantly. What will happen if you do so? What will happen if you do so? La ilaha illallah. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا First of all, Allah will send the sky upon you raining. Rain as in provisions, because rain brings crops. Crops can't grow without rain, and that's food. And then you sell that for money. So Allah will give you provisions, things to be able to live in abundance, inshaAllah, the more istighfar you do. If you want a job, do istighfar. Honestly, if you want more money, you do more istighfar, as we will see. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ Allah will give you more money. Allah literally says, I will give you more money if you do more istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allah will give you more money eventually. Allah will give you children. So if you are a couple and you're struggling, struggling for a child, I swear by Allah, increase in your istighfar. For there have been many and countless stories of couples that have gone to a doctor and the doctor says, you cannot have children. They then go and ask someone of knowledge and they tell him, go and increase in your istighfar. Ask Allah for forgiveness constantly. And after maybe a while of constant istighfar, oh Wallahi, Allah brings them a child. These stories have existed, subhanAllah. So Allah will give you provisions in abundance. He will give you money. He will give you children. Allah will give you gardens and rivers. I.e. Allah will give you Jannah, inshaAllah. So many amazing benefits of istighfar in the dunya. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Like having to do istighfar every day should be a daily part of our routine. You set aside a period of your day, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is, and you just sit there and you do istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. At home, on the table spread, looking up at the sky. And Hassan al-Basri is a you know, big, big scholar back in the day. He says, أَكْثِرُ مِنَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ Oh my, oh people, increase in istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness. أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ فَإِنَّكُمْ مَا تَدْرُونَ مَتَى تَنْزِلُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ SubhanAllah. What wise words from this man. He said, O oh people, increase in your istighfar whenever. When you're sat on the table, when you're walking to the shop, sat in a gathering, when you're in a marketplace. At all times, ask Allah for forgiveness, for you do not know when Allah's mercy, His rahmah will come down because of the istighfar that you have done. So you don't know when it is. So you always want to be in a state of asking Allah for forgiveness. SubhanAllah. Now when you ask Allah for forgiveness, you should use some of Allah's mighty names to ask Him for His forgiveness. Asma'hu ar-Rahmah, His names of mercy. For example, Ya Ghaffar, the one who forgives the constant and repetitive sin, no matter how many times it's done. Remember what Nuh alayhi salam said to his people? فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا He is the one who forgives the repetitive, small, constant sin. Okay? غَفُور يَا غَفُور اغْفِرْ لِي Oh Allah, you are al ghafur The ghafur he forgives the big and mighty sins like zina and alcohol and disobeying your parents and things like that. So we ask Allah using his name al ghafur For example, wasi al maghfira Oh Allah, you are wide in, in forgiveness. So oh Allah, forgive me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who actually gives you the ability to ask him for forgiveness. Allah is the one who gives you the ability to make tawbah. Make sure to screenshot or memorize this dua. It's very important that you say it at least every single day. It is. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa ant khalaqtani wa ana abduk. Wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma istata'at. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at. Abu'u laka bi ni'matika alay. Wa abu'u laka bi dhanbi. Faghfir li. Fa innahu la yaghfiru al-dunuba illa ant. Subhanallah. Anyway, the translation of it will be here. Just pause the screen and read it inshaAllah. This is the ultimate way to ask Allah for forgiveness. Now this dua is so important. I promise you, this one changed my life personally. If you have any problem, any anxiety, any worry, anything that's difficult that you're going through, and every single one of you is going through something, because this is the nature of life, you must know this hadith. It is narrated in Sunan Abi Dawood by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, where, he's, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man akthara min al-istighfar, ja'ala Allahu lahu min kulli min faraja. وَمِن كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ 
La ilaha illallah. Whoever increases in their istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness. Allah, what will happen? Ja'al Allahu lahu min kulli min faraja. From every worry that this person has or anxiety, Allah will sort it out for them. Allah will get rid of all of your worries. And we all have worries. So increase in your istighfar. Wa min kulli makhraja. And from every narrow, tight, constricted problem or space, Allah will open it up for you. We all go through times where we feel that the whole world is closing in on us. No one understands us, no one is listening to us, and there's just no way out. Thinking, how can I get out of this situation? Increase in your istighfar. Wallahi, Allah will find you a way out. Wallahi, Allah will find you a way out. The hadith says so. The Prophet, he doesn't lie. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ The Prophet doesn't speak from his own desires. It is but a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, and this one's important, because I'm going to be doing a video on how to get more money, how to get more risk. It is actually by doing more istighfar, because the hadith says, وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And Allah will provide risk for them in a way that they don't realize. Where did this risk come from? Where has it come from? Allah has given it to you. You just don't know. Subhanallah. You have to trust Allah and increase in your istighfar. And risk isn't just money, it's everything from good health, good relationships, good character, good iman, every single thing in life. But obviously a lot of people think risk is money. Make sure to understand and memorize this hadith and use it. Like before I start doing my istighfar, I always say that this hadith, من أكثر من الاستغفار جعل الله له من كلها من فرجه من كل ضيق مخرجه ورزقه من حيث لا يحتسب. And then I begin my istighfar. It's like I'm telling oh Allah, oh Allah, you said this on the tongue of your prophet. So here I am doing my istighfar. So I'm waiting. يعني make a way out for me from my problem. Subhanallah. This hadith as well. Oh my God, it was amazing when I learned it. It just made me so happy. عن عائشة رضي الله عنها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال طوبى لمن وجد في صحيفته استغفارا كثيرا لا إله إلا الله عائشة narrates that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said glad tidings well done congratulations to the one on the day of judgment they see in their scroll of good deeds in their book of good deeds a lot of istighfar is written here's a book on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you your book اقرأ كتابك inshallah we get given our book in our right hand it means we've been successful you open up your book of good deeds and you just see Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah this per- He did Istighfar Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah Tuba, Tuba liman wajada fi sahifatihi Istighfaran kathira Glad tidings to you So increase in your Istighfar at all times so that your scrolls on the Day of Judgment your book on the Day of Judgment has loads of Istighfar written on it and this hadith is amazing as well. Listen very carefully. This hadith is especially important when we commit that huge sin that we feel like that's it, I'm finished. Allah can't forgive me. I've done such a bad crime that I literally cannot get Allah's maghfirah. Listen to this hadith. For a man once came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Wadnuba, wadnuba. Oh, how big is my sin? How big is my sin? I'm doomed, I'm finished. And the man said, Wadnuba, two or three times. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the man to say the following words. Make sure to write these down and memorize them so that next time you commit a sin and we all commit a sin because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Kullu ibn Adam khatta' wa khayrul khatta'ina tawabun. Every son of Adam will sin, but the best of the sinners are the repenters. So when you want to repent and you should repent, immediately make sure to say these words. Get ready. اللهم مغفرتك أوسع من ذنبي ورحمتك أرجع عندي من عملي سبحان الله. Oh Allah, your maghfira, your forgiveness is larger than my sin, and your mercy is more hopeful to me than all of my good deeds combined. The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded the man to say it again, عد, and he said it again. Then he said, عد, say it again. So the man said it two or three times. Then the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, قد غفر الله لك. Allah has forgiven you. So make sure to memorize these words. Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhanbi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali. Subhanallah. So I hope this video inshallah has inspired all of us to just take some moments out of our day and sit there and do istighfar. This is along with the morning and evening adhkar. Along inshallah with the, by the way I've done a video on the adhkar, just check them out here. Along with um, your adhkar after the prayer, sit there. Just before sunset, whenever you, wherever you are, get one of these little clicker things as you guys can see and just do astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, and think about it. Try and attach your heart to it. Make sure it's attached to the word istighfar. Why are you asking Allah for forgiveness? Remember, it's because of our lack of good worship to Him. Remember what Rasulullah he said, okay? And it's also because of the sins we've committed. We all know what sins we've committed. So you also ask Allah for forgiveness for those sins. 
استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله أكثر من الاستغفار increase in your istighfar and wallahi Allah will bless your life so much with 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 whatever you want inshallah whatever you want inshallah I promise you I, I'm telling you it works inshallah 10-15 minutes a day sit there and just turn off everything don't text me don't call me turn off the phone go outside look at the star, sun look at the sky look at the stars even if it's not night time, wherever you are, sit down on your chair, on your table. Astaghfirullah, 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 astaghfirullah. Hundreds of times, thousands, whatever you want. And watch, watch how Allah will open up a path for you and will give you what you want and will get rid of your worries and your anxieties. I promise you, please, please, please do more istighfar. Now, if you like this video, then please make sure to follow Muslims Reconnect. Abu Turab will put the details here. This is a new academy that my friend and I, uh, Abu Turab, will be launching inshallah, where we're going to be bringing you more kind of videos like this, long form content. Uh, it's like an academy to help people's iman grow, myself included, because when I give these talks, when I give these durus, these classes, my iman grows. So all of us are benefiting inshallah. And my aim of the academy, my aim and Abu Turab's aim is for our hearts of the Muslims to be so attached to Allah that all you want to do 24 seven is just please Allah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Oh Allah, everything is for you. Every second, every standing, every sitting, every lying down. Whatever I'm doing, oh Allah, it is for you. That is what Muslims Reconnect aims to do. Reconnect Muslims to the Quran and the Sunnah and ignite that flame of love and passion to serve Allah and to please Allah. And inshallah again, Allah's eternal pleasure and mercy in the highest level of Al-Firdaus in Jannah. So you can finally be at rest and at peace. الحمد لله رب العالمين وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك سبحان ربي العظيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته